If there's anything I've learned after eight years on YouTube, it's this. Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. If you're new, you're coming in on a unique episode. I had posted questions a couple of weeks ago on my Facebook, Instagram, Patreon page, an opportunity for my viewers to ask questions for today's Q&A. But if this is your first time coming, normally I bring you information on organizing, decluttering, doing DIYs, upcycles, and anything crafty. I had meant to do this last Friday, but I got a chance to go with my stepmom and some of her friends to Northern California in the Los Olivos solving area for some wine tasting. I had a great time and I am fighting a migraine, so I didn't want to be another day late, but if I'm off, I apologize. I'm pushing through so I don't get too far behind. But I wanted to answer some of my favorite questions that I got from those that you asked. So let's start with the first question that I got. I'm going to start right off with one of my longest viewers who has been very faithful in commenting, not just on my YouTube page, but also in my Facebook page. And that is Anna Ramirez. Anna asks, what inspired you to do what you do? What's your favorite craft organization project you worked on? And what's the best advice suggestion you've received or given? I love this question, actually. What inspired me to do what I do is ever since I was young and I didn't recognize why it was until pretty recently, but I've always suffered anxiety. Uh, anxiety and depression have been something I've always struggled with. And when I was younger and I would get anxious, I would start getting all of this extra energy and I didn't know what to do with it. So I would start either pacing around or I would start rearranging my toys or when I got older, rearranging my room. And the older I got, the more I would rearrange my space whenever I felt anxious or I started feeling any bouts of depression coming on. And when my kids were very young and I was sadly divorcing their dad, talk about a lot of pent up feelings and sadness and anxiety. I was asking friends if I could come over and organize their space because I just had so much to work through and that physicality allowed me to work through what I was thinking and feeling at the time. So now I'm a single mom with no source of income and people started suggesting, why don't you do this for a living? And I thought, no one in their right mind would ever pay me to organize their space. Well, it turns out a lot of people actually did appreciate that type of help. So initially I started volunteering and I would say to the person, I think it's going to take me this amount of hours to do your space. Let's see how close I am. And once I got it down to a pretty good estimate of, I think it'll take this long and it would actually take me that long. I had my baby cousin come up with a logo. We were playing with names. She drew a logo of a fairy changing a closet from chaos into something that was totally organized. I loved the idea of the fairy and that was the dawn of the clutter fairy. We played around with a couple of different logos. I finally ended up drawing the one fairy where she's magically changing things and that was just what I went with. My favorite craft project and organization, there really are so many. The ones that touched me the most were when I found somebody who was similar to me in having struggles with their life because of chronic pain or depression, and they had just felt that oppression of their space taking them over. When we could go in with my crew and completely transform their space, and you could see the excitement of them actually being able to live in their space again, those were the ones that would just touch me the most and allow me to feel so much joy for weeks on end. But my favorite project, just because it was so big, we met a gentleman who was an avid fisherman from the time he was a child with his father, and he started collecting fishing lures. And no exaggeration, he had over 100,000 fishing lures that he had collected that were special, that he had handmade, and we organized every single one of them into categories by size, by type, by color, it was a weeks long project, but when he was done, it was a showcase for him to show these off. And 
Tell you what, our crew learned so much about fishing lures. To this day, I can tell you more about freshwater, saltwater, and lake lures than I ever thought I would, and I've never fished in my life. So that one was one that I really loved. When it comes to the advice that, um, the best advice or suggestion I've ever received or given, honestly, the one that I've heard many times, but I've now given, and it's not verbatim, but it's definitely, give yourself grace um i've been at those low points so many times in my life and i have berated myself and i hear it and see it in other people when i'm going to help them and they're just beating themselves up because their space has gotten messy or out of control and the narrative that they're giving themselves is i should have i should have i should have that's true but that's not the reality when you are honestly doing your very best and all that means is that you got up that day and ate and showered, then that means you did your best for that day. So giving yourself grace and doing the best you can, sometimes not even every day, just in that 10 minute period, pat yourself on the back and in that new 10 minute cycle, do what you can again and just keep doing the best you can moment by moment and eventually you're going to make progress. And if in that 10 minute process, all you can do is sit down on the couch and watch a quick video or read or scroll through your phone, then that's what you got to do in that moment. So honestly, getting grace for yourself and if you're watching and you need it, telling yourself it's okay to give yourself grace to do the best you can in that moment is the best advice I can give to people and the best advice I can continue to give to myself. Lika asked, when are you buying, converting, and traveling in your RV van? Now, for those of you who don't know, I started my business back in 2012. I got on YouTube much later and actually started making videos a little bit even after that. But I'm celebrating my eighth year of signing up for YouTube. Uh, and it was actually on Friday. When I first started my business, it was the Clutter Fairy. And I loved the name. I loved the logo. I got the legal assistance to get everything set up and incorporated here in California. And I started actually making the videos on YouTube, I think around 2015 or 16. I'll have to look up what my very first video was. It's probably right here. But shortly after I got started and I started gaining traction, there was another clutter fairy. And we communicated and we decided that it would be best since she actually trademarked the name that I would go ahead and start something else, keep my business here in California. But it was still confusing with two of us on YouTube. So I created the Crafty Organizer. This gave me the ability to play with my logo a little bit, but also I really love the DIY why crafty aspect so it was a blessing in disguise in my opinion because it allowed me to introduce more craftiness into my channel so if you've ever wondered what happened or why there was two i wish this other company well i have no ill feelings it was just an unfortunate thing that we both had the same name and that i didn't get that legal advice or the information that there was another company out there so long ago but no hard feelings. It all worked out really well for me. But part of my business plan was to start traveling the U.S. in a travel van because I love the idea of getting to just drive to a new city every day. But obviously, I still need to pay for the gas and the food. So I thought I could be helping people organize on the way, continue to have really cool content on my channel, and get to see places of the U.S. that I probably wouldn't go to otherwise. So that is still a plan that I'm hoping to continue with probably in the next two to three years years. So that is why I initially started Patreon. So if you're interested in seeing that side of my business and my channel develop, please consider supporting me. I've gotten honed in a couple of times on an RV and then I pull back. But the main thing I was waiting for is both of my kids to be graduated on their way to college and living on their own. And my youngest does graduate this June. So I'm really excited to get this part of the business up and going. And as soon as I find do, I will be letting you know when I get to start traveling out to those areas. So stay tuned. The other part of her question was a brief introduction to your family. Pets, what do you have? Hope, hope all are in good health. 
As you may or may not know, I was a single mom for a very long time. I spent 14 years raising my girls on my own. I never had any intention on dating. I was happy being single. And then two years ago, a friend that I have known for over 35 years, we had always caught up, our kids played together, he was married, I was married, I got divorced, he got divorced, but started dating someone else, he was engaged. Long story short, we went to lunch and we were catching up on things. He had just broken up with his fiance, and when I mentioned that, I think I was ready to finally start dating. It took us about maybe a month before we were right in the swing of things. Everything just moved so organically and easily, and I couldn't be any happier. We had planned on getting married the end of this year, 2024. But again, those of you who followed, my dad uh, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and went in for a very serious procedure called the Whipple. Uh, the beginning of last year, and boy was that rocky. Uh, he got sepsis, he had an intestinal blockage after he got out, so he was in and out of the hospital for over six months. He was actually in the hospital from his surgery for a solid 89 days. It was crazy. So um, we're very happy that he has now made a full recovery. He is doing very well. But for a while there, when it was really kind of scary, I did not want to get married without my dad there. So we decided to move everything up. So we ended up getting married last November and it was a very small ceremony with just the closest friends and family there. My dad got to walk down the aisle holding the bouquet, which was the cutest thing ever. So, um, yeah, that's my family. It's now my husband, my two daughters. One is off in college. One is about to graduate high school. We have one dog, Yzma, and uh, everyone is very happy and healthy. How are you liking the new place, including the crafty area? The new place is a work in progress. <laughs> Uh, because he had such a full household already, he had two grown daughters. This was the home he had grown up in, so there were still a lot of his mom's things there that he just had not gotten a chance to get rid of. Most of my things are still in my old garage at the home that I rented. My daughter stays at that home part-time with her dad. Her dad moved into that home. So it was a really unique but good situation that we were all able to stay in good contact with each other and do what was going to be best for my daughter so that high school was really easy and close for her. So we're still trying to, we're still trying to sort all that out. But in the meantime, I do have an indoor crafting area now, which I love because before I was in my garage and I would either deal with it being super cold or super hot or having the sun hit it at certain times during the day. So I'm loving being in side but it is smaller and so a lot of my things still aren't in here and I still get kind of frustrated sometimes because all of my work tools my saws my power tools those are still at the other house but you know this is a work in progress and another person had asked a question that I'm going to answer in a little bit so I'll say more once I get to that question oh the last question she asked is what happened to the architectural table you found <sighs> I cannot wait to work on this table. Because everything is still packed up in that garage, I haven't had the chance to actually get to it yet, but I'm really looking forward to getting to refinish that and either use that as my crafting table in my craft room, or I might use it as a dining table. So I'm not sure yet, but it hasn't gone away and I'm still looking forward to working on that. The next question comes from Cynthia Wolicki. Now, Cynthia is someone who I actually got to meet. She was in LA at one time and she called and said, I've been watching you for a long time. We had communicated many, many times and I got to go meet her. So since then, it always feels like when she sends me a message or she comments, it's chatting with a friend. So I'm super glad that Cynthia got to ask me if I was coming to see her in Arizona anytime soon. I promise Cynthia, as soon as I get to start traveling around, you and D is another one. D is somebody who I actually got to go organize, was a viewer organization project many years ago. So the next time I go to Arizona, D and Cynthia are two of the viewers I'm gonna go say hello to, so stay tuned. Liz Arguello asks, do you miss your garage setup or have you adjusted to your new space? And are you busy? How often do you actually craft? I 
tinker every day. I don't actually make anything that I show, but I'm always tinkering and making things or moving things around. It's what soothes me. So oftentimes when I'm suggesting to people that they make space to craft, it's because of how therapeutic I have found it over the years. And again, that question about the setup, I miss the garage setup, not the heat or the extreme cold, but because everything I needed had been set up in the zones that I'm always talking to you guys about. So I miss it, but I know I'm going to have it again. So right now it's just a temporary thing and I'll work around it. And I'm so grateful to my husband for, he gave up two rooms in his home so that I could have a craft room office and so that my daughter could have a room of her own when she's here. So I am very grateful to him for giving up so much. And I try and remind myself that anytime I start to feel like, oh, I wish I had more space, I'm grateful for the space that I have. Beth Benson asks, we are moving this year and have many rolls of nice corrugated cardboard, some small, some large tall. Do you have any ideas of what I could make with them? Well, I have not done anything with corrugated cardboard before. I know there are a ton of ideas on the internet. I know so many people have used them interchangeably with what I've done with the foam core because if they're using the corrugated cardboard as a shelf, for example, they can take bamboo skewers or long pins and put it through to give extra support and with glue, those shelves are not going anywhere. So it depends on how much you have and how much you want to create. But I would definitely go online. Pinterest is just the easiest wealth of information when it comes to ideas. But I think there's so many fun crafts that you could make out of that too. So I'd be reluctant to keep it as well. If it's in a big roll, I'd probably cut it down into manageable chunks and I'd hide them under bed mattresses or behind furniture so that when I need it, I can get it. The only thing I would caution with on cardboard like that is depending upon the region you live in, Silverfish love cardboard. So try and keep it in a very dry area so you're not attracting any little critters. But once you do create something with it, I would love to see what you do. The Evie asked, were you always crafty? Did you learn from watching a relative or was this something you enjoy doing from your youth? As I mentioned, I always struggled a little bit with anxiety and depression and I could just at a very young age hone in on any type of crafting supplies and just lose myself. It was something I always enjoyed. And I think I recognized the therapeutic part of it at a very young age. I think I was seven and I got a toilet paper roll and a couple of little Dixie cups and a little box and I made a telephone. Uh, and I probably used a shoelace or something to connect. The Dixie cups were attached to the toilet paper roll and then I had some sort of a string and I would pretend to be a secretary answering the phone and then I would hang it up and take notes. I don't know why. It was just something that was super fun to me but I remember being so proud of that telephone um, and I'd gotten a brad and even put paper on it so I could pretend to turn the dial. Yes, I'm that old. Turn dials. <laughs> So I've always been crafty. I've always been able to walk through stores and see something and go, oh, I love the look of that. That's too expensive. I could make it for less. I don't always do it, but I've always still thought that. So I probably have several hundred pictures on my computer and on my phone of things I want to make someday that I still haven't. But you know, I'm, I love having the resources to create those things when I'm ready and I have time. I'm not very creative though in just taking supplies and making something out of it on its own. So I've always needed an idea to motivate me and then I can take it to a whole new area. But interestingly, I've never been one to just get a blank piece of wood and think of something to create with it. I'll be looking through all of the ideas and I'll take elements from a bunch of ideas and incorporate them together. So in the comments section, I'd love to know, are you the type that creates things on your own or are you like me and you'll pick your favorite pieces and then put something together? Let me know in the comments. Shelly asks, how scary was it starting your YouTube channel? Another question, how do we not get caught up thinking our spaces aren't good enough? I think my space looks so bad. Am I the only one who has this issue? Shelly, you know I love you. I get to chat with her often. We email and text back and forth. She is absolutely the sweetest woman. Um, to get started, I was 
terrified. I started my YouTube eight years ago, but it took me another eight months before I finally posted my first video. I would record them and think it wasn't good enough. I was watching a lot of beauty channels at the time because I think that was super popular back when I started. And they all had the big lashes and the pretty hair and the bright lights. And I kept thinking, I needed all those things in place before I made a video. So when you watch my first actually several videos, it they're just embarrassing. Number one, because it wasn't the authentic me and it took me a while to realize that people are going to like you or they're not. There's a lot of people who make horrible comments about my nose and how my voice, and it doesn't matter. There are people out there who you love and click with instantly and there's people that just grate on your nerves. I'm okay if you don't like me, just click off and click onto someone else. But it did take me a little while to get that confidence of just be yourself. If people like you, that's great. And if they don't, that's okay. So it was scary as heck trying it for the first time. But once I just kept pretending that I was talking to clients and I really care about helping people, it was really easy. But yeah, those first few videos were really rough and I'm always embarrassed, but I think it's important to see my progress from those beginning ones. So if you want to laugh at my caterpillar eyelashes, go watch those first few videos. I gave up on them very quickly. <laughs> With the question about other people's spaces and comparing it to your own, you know, I think as humans, we're always looking at what other people have. That old adage about the grass is always greener on the other side. Well, I also heard something about water your own grass and don't worry about other people's lawns. The truth is, is social media does the weirdest thing about just presenting the best of everything. It's an illusion. Right now I have this blind pulled down to block the sun and then I have a ring light right here trying to balance out the light. That's not what things normally look like in here. And you're just seeing my bookcase. You're not seeing the pile of you know, unused things that are down in the corner over here and the fact that I'm wearing slippers right now. <laughs> so when it comes to comparing yourself to others, remember everyone is always comparing everything and social media is not a real representation of what real life is. So unless you're going into people's homes and your friends' homes and seeing how they live and you're wondering how they pull it all off, ask them but otherwise they probably took everything before you visited that they didn't want you to see and shoved them in a cabinet shoved them in a closet shoved it in a garage because we're all human and we're all doing the best that we can but even as i mentioned in my own space you know i have never been completely happy in my space there's always something i can tweak and i think that's okay i think it's always going to be an evolution as long as you are creating it for your own personal needs and not to appease anybody else. I say whatever your space looks like, feels like is totally up to you. If you are content with it, that is really all that matters. And you know, comparing it to other people, if you're getting it for inspiration and you decide to change something, then change it. I love love, love constantly changing up my space. It makes me happy and it reminds me constantly of what I have. So um, Shelly, you know you're one of my favorites and I appreciate every time you send and share information with me. So I, I hope that you just love your space. Put out the things that make you happy. Uh, put away the things that don't make you happy and just remember every day it's for you at the end of the day. And as long as you've enjoyed it, that's the best thing you could do for yourself. The, today's last question comes from Shelly Lemon. She asked, I'm a subscriber that doesn't ask a lot of questions. I'm like that with my family and friends. What do you want to share? What I want to share is I never in a million years thought that I would get to have a life where I got to help people and be able to pay my bills from it. And I I genuinely mean that. Um, when I started doing the organizing, it was such a joy to get to go in and give someone their space back. It, it really is. And each person I would interview as I got to hire people to work with me, um, I would say that I can teach you to organize, but I can't teach you to be nurturing. I can't teach you to be honest. I can't teach you to be compassionate. And those were the things I was always looking for. And I was so dang lucky to get 
the most amazing crew. And I was pretty devastated when COVID came and I had to give up that business. It really was a big loss for me. The girls all got other jobs and it was just really hard to get it back started once everything opened back up again. So that's a regret that I have. But while we were locked down on COVID, I just kept making videos. And for a little while, I was doing the virtual organizing. And it was such a treat to get to work with people and see them coming into their own space and taking suggestions and information that I had and creating something that worked for them and just realizing that they had the tools and they had the power to organize and live in a space that worked for them. So something i want to share is much like i was saying with shelly live in your own space if it's not working for you don't be afraid of changing it don't be afraid of making a mess and getting into it and even when it feels overwhelming and like you've made the biggest mistake ever just keep going at it a little bit at a time and I promise, even if it takes a couple of months, you're eventually going to start having things click into place. And as soon as those few things click into place, it's an amazing mindset that takes over. Kind of like if you've ever been a runner or known someone who runs, when you're first running, it's daunting, it's miserable, it's so hard. And one day when you're running, it just starts to feel good. And then you are so invigorated to go running. Organizing is so much like that. Things will start to click into place and all of a sudden you look around and realize, oh, I, I did it. So my takeaway from this is I couldn't have done this if each and every one of you hadn't clicked on me to watch a video, had made comments to encourage me to keep going because this was a scary thing to start. But I have gotten to create a whole career out of talking with people. It's why I love chatting in the comments. It's why I've created the Facebook page. I've got the patrons who allow me to make these videos because YouTube is great, but sometimes YouTube doesn't pay anything. And those are really tough months when I don't get any income. So the patrons allow me to keep going. They've allowed me to reinvest and buy equipment like cameras and lighting and microphones. So this has been a gift. Uh, to get to do this as a career. And it's only eight years, but my first big goal was to get that play button. And once I got that, I kind of floundered like, what do I do now? My next big goal is honestly to get that RV and get to start coming out and seeing you guys and organizing for you guys. So I felt like this was a really winded video and I'm sorry, but I genuinely love chatting with you all and I love sharing things and I'm very much wearing my heart on my sleeve and very open about the struggles and tribulations that I've had. So if you've ever had a question, ask away. Ask away in the comments, send me an email, go on my Facebook page. I love chatting with you guys and I'm so appreciative to have each and every one of you here. So the next video is going to be the backyard. I'm not sure when I'm gonna get that done, but I've been working on it a little bit at a time. Some days it's only been an hour at a time because man my body is starting to tell me you can't do what you used to do and I'm fighting it but I'm going to try and get that done I also had a Hobby Lobby clearance item that I got right after Christmas that I just redid so I'll be doing that one in the next couple days and you know any other videos that pop up so please make sure you've hit that subscribe button thank you so much for letting me be long and winded and as I've said Thank you to my patrons who allow me to make these videos. I love you guys. I wouldn't be able to be me without you. Thanks, and I'll see you in a few days. Bye.